flying taxis are going to happen. The question for me at the moment is rather when is it going to happen and not if. We will have aircraft that are much smaller than today's aircraft and then we're going to be much more accessible. So they're going to land in your neighborhoods and you might take a small car ride or you can take a micro mobility scooter ride to get to the vertiport and you'll kind of go through there just like you do at a taxi stand today and get on an aircraft that'll take you anywhere within call it 100, 150 mile radius. And this all will be one seamless experience. So I imagine it to be fully integrated into my mobility app from the morning, so my e-scooter ride to the office then the trip to the airport, the flight, and then from the airport into the city, and again, the scooter for the last mile, maybe even one integrated ticket. All of these new vehicles are going to be fully electric. They're going to be much cleaner, locally, completely emission-free. Will it replace car ownership? I doubt it. I think it will be very complementary. Some of the timelines we see are very aggressive, and so I'm not quite as bullish as some of the public statements around how quickly we can ramp up the system. But in the medium to long term, 10 years out, I'm actually quite bullish. I think this is a mode of transportation that will eventually become quite frequently used and it will be safe, it will be you know, saving many of us time, it will be sustainable and so there's a bright future to look forward to. I would say flying above the street is much safer than driving together with other people on a road. Technology-wise, we're getting there. I think the big two hurdles we have to overcome is on the one hand, public acceptance. Right? Are we gonna be happy flying in an aircraft without a pilot? If something goes wrong, who do we hold accountable? You know, How do we certify a system as good enough? I mean, those are important questions that a number of working groups are working on, but that'll slow us down in getting to fully autonomous aircraft. And so autonomous passenger flights, I'm less bullish on. I think it'll take us uh, into the next decade before we will see that. And the evolution that could happen then is, first of all, the pilot is in the vehicle, then you take the pilot out of the vehicle to the ground, but you have a one-on-one -on -one operation, one pilot for one vehicle, but remotely operated. And then over time, this ratio goes down. Full autonomy, as in the vehicle is doing all the decision making and there is no remote observation and so on, I don't think that this will ever happen. We don't have it today in conventional air mobility, so all the planes are sort of supervised, right? And I think we'll see something similar. People are ready for flying taxi. Across geographies, more than 15 to 20 percent of respondents say they can definitely imagine to change from their current mode of mobility to a flying taxi service in the future. Passengers are spending more than 400 billion US dollars globally for taxi services every year. E-hailing adds another 100 billion US dollars on top of that. And if you now imagine that flying taxis can be able to capture some of this market share and becoming a real alternative to the taxi, the market opportunity is in the range of several billion US dollars. I'm kind of at the level where I think we're going to see in the tens of billion of dollars in market size globally in the early 2030s. Um, but I could see it scale up much faster if we hit really all these unlocks right. By 2030, we will still see a sizable number of players out there. 10, 15, maybe even 20 players out there. Why? Because by 2030, the technology is still ramping up. But ultimately, I think there's a space probably for five or so players globally. We're talking about the democratization of helicopter flight and ultimately the democratization of private jets. And that's something that many people would not be able to afford if it weren't for these advanced air mobility vehicles, simply because taking a private jet is something that probably less than 1% or much less than 1% of the population will ever even do in their entire lifetime. It's going to be so important that this is not a toy for the rich, but something that is broadly providing value to people. I mean, there's many, many people in the world today that can't afford a plane ticket. But if we really get this industry to scale, this could be the same price of a taxi. I'm excited about, you know, the ability to be sustainable, inclusive, and see, you know, a ramping up of a brand new industry.